Spasticity stinks, particularly right when you wake up and right when you're trying to fall asleep. In this video, I share with you how we can overcome exactly that. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy, and thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the variability of spasticity. Spasticity is a super annoying symptom. It's when opposing muscle groups are arguing or not getting along. And what results is a spasm or a cramp or a charley horse or a limb that's really hard to bend. And it can be painful. But it's variable, meaning it's not the same intensity all day long. Very often, Patients with MS experience the worst spasticity right when they wake up and they're trying to start their day or and when they're trying to fall asleep at night or when they're trying to stay asleep at night. So in this video, I wanna share with you how we can target those particular times to optimize spasticity and avoid over-treating during the middle of the day, which can result in side effects. So let's jump in. First off, let's discuss why spasticity tends to be worse early in the morning and then late at night. It has to do with the fact that when your body is still, when your limbs aren't moving, spasticity intensifies or gets worse. During the middle of your day, you're probably the most active at times, moving your arms, moving your legs, your body is in motion, as compared to when you're sleeping at night and you're trying not to move, or even in the evenings when you're hanging out eating dinner, sitting down, or on the couch. When you wake up in the morning and you're trying to start your day, you just spent the night still. And so you wake up really, really stiff. Also, spasticity can get worse when your body's cold or when you're cold. And there's a natural diurnal rhythm to the body's temperature. Oftentimes it drops down at night. If you live where I live in the Midwestern United States, it can get pretty cold here. And so sometimes just the cold ambient temperatures can intensify spasticity. With this in mind, let's talk about how we can game out optimizing spasticity early in the morning and late at night, and yet leaving the middle of the day so that we're not groggy and over-medicated. Number one is to think about hydration. Oftentimes we're dehydrated and oftentimes we wake up dehydrated. And so trying to get some good water right when you wake up in the morning is actually a first step towards improving spasticity. If you're not drinking enough water during the day, you're probably dehydrated in the evenings. And so by upping your water game overall, you're gonna see an improvement in spasticity. If you don't believe me, try it for a week and you'll be shocked at the benefits. Number two is to get your stretch on. Stretching out your muscles will help decrease spasticity for several hours. And so when you enter your bedroom at night, before you actually go to sleep, I want you to get on your bedroom floor or on your bed and stretch out. Spend five, maybe even 10 minutes stretching out your butt, your back, your hips, your hamstrings, your quads, your calves. Really take some time holding each position for at least 30 seconds so that your muscles know exactly what you're trying to do. If you do that, you're gonna decrease spasms, cramps, and stiff legs over the course of the evening when you're trying to sleep. Likewise, when you wake up in the morning and you exit your bed, before you leave your bedroom, again, I'm gonna encourage you to stretch. This is gonna help kickstart your day, stretching out your muscles and decreasing spasticity as you go through your early morning daily activities. Number three is to poop. If you are really constipated and essentially full of stool, you're gonna ramp up your spasticity. Your spasticity will be worse. And if you can get on a good bowel regimen, it's gonna help with a lot of aspects of MS, including spasticity. So try to get in the habit of having a good healthy poop. Number four is to consider the temperature of your bedroom. If your bedroom's particularly cold, if you've got a fan on you and no covers, and your body's getting cold over the course of the evening, you're way more likely to wake up stiff. I'm not suggesting that you make your bedroom super, super hot, but, but think about the temperature. And if you can keep your body a bit warmer, you're gonna have less spasms and cramps waking you up, and you're gonna be less stiff when you wake up in the morning. Now, the rest of my tips have to deal with medicines. And I am not giving you medical advice on how to take medicines. On the contrary, I'm teaching you how I manipulate medicines in my clinic with my patients. And this information is literally just to educate you so that you can go and talk to your clinician. This is also a great time to ask you to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you dig this and help push the content out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you.
Number five is a biggie. It's how we use the medicine baclofen. So baclofen is a chemical that mimics GABA. That's a neurotransmitter which tells your muscle to knock it off. When you have damage from MS, brain and spinal cord, it can result in not enough GABA being produced to tell the muscle to knock it off. And so when you take baclofen, you're literally providing the neurotransmitter that you're missing. The result is that it can decrease spasms, cramps, charley horses, and stiff legs. Baclofen is a medicine that lasts about five hours. And so the timing of the baclofen is pretty important. It also takes about 20 minutes to kick in. So when you keep these two things in mind, we have to think about the timing of the baclofen. Oftentimes, when a patient takes baclofen three times a day, they're taking a pill with breakfast, around lunch, and then dinner. And this same person is having a lot of spasms right when they wake up. They're really stiff and cramping when they're trying to go to sleep. Now, think about the baclofen. If you're waking up at six and taking your medicines at seven or eight, there is no baclofen on board the whole morning when you're trying to get through your morning routine. If you're taking your last baclofen at six or seven at night and you're going to bed at 11 or 12, there's no baclofen in your body the whole time you're trying to sleep because it's wearing off, the timing isn't right. And so if we look at that first dose of baclofen and we scoot it really early, things change. Here's a pro tip. Put the baclofen at the bedside table with a glass of water, and when you wake up at five in the morning to pee, or the very second you wake up, first thing you do is you take that baclofen. It'll take 20 minutes to kick in. Then when you start your morning routine and actually get out of bed, you're gonna already be loose. Couple this with stretching, and now we're really doing something. Now let's think about the baclofen in the evening. If you could take the baclofen later, like right before bed, or maybe an hour before bed, it's going to crest through the first part of your evening, and it's gonna help decrease spasms, cramps, and charley horses. If you couple that with stretching right before you sleep, again, we're really onto something. The idea here is talk to your clinician about adjusting the timing of the baclofen to really cover that early morning period and that evening late period. Number six, has to deal with a specific tip for the evening. Spasticity is oftentimes the worst in the evening and when we're trying to sleep. And sometimes baclofen isn't enough. And so in certain cases, I will add a second antispasmodic, a medicine called tizanidine or Xanaflex. This medicine is extremely sedating, but we can take advantage of that side effect at night when we're trying to sleep anyways. And it specifically helps with cramps and spasms. So in some cases, we can augment the benefits of the baclofen by adding in a low dose of Xanaflex, and together, that's gonna get us through the evening without spasms, cramps, etc. Tip number seven is Botox. Not to remove wrinkles in your face, but to help with spasms and cramps. Oftentimes, there are specific muscles that tend to be the naughty ones, whether that be a hamstring or a calf. And if that's the case, you could talk with your clinician about Botoxing that muscle. It knocks it down a notch, takes away, let's say, 5-10% of its oomph, and decreases its ability to spasm and cramp. And that can help you all the time, and you're going to get a lot more benefit in the mornings and the evenings when you're more likely to have those things happen. Botox can be super helpful. If you'd like to hear more tricks and tips and ways of beating spasticity, click the video that's on your screen right now. Until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.